Take us back to the moment you found out. My girlfriend, she was the one that came to me and said, your husband's cheating on you. And my jaw just dropped to the floor. And I FaceTimed him and said, you know, you have about five minutes to get your story straight. When you guys split up, the next day you had to be on camera. What was that like? It was probably the worst day of my life, to be honest with you. We got a little makeover shemergency. Graphic tea ain't cute, Miss Sister Girl. I mean, you can sleep in one, but don't leave the house in one. Welcome, RuPaul. Welcome to the show. Now, you guys know we're doing a three-week test run on your local Fox station, and we are taking America by storm. Yes, ma'am, we are. So you better tell somebody. Now, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Can I get an amen up in here? Yeah. And baby, this audience is ready. Yeah. Before you all, before the show, I saw everybody strutting the runway, and now it's time for me to choose my sleigh of the day. You ready for it? Okay. My sleigh of the day is that lady right over there with the hat on the side with the earrings. Come on over here. Hi, here. How are you? Come on over here. What is your name and where are you from? My name is Bia Barnett and I am from Arizona. Where in okay. <laughs> where in Arizona? Phoenix. Phoenix, Arizona. Where'd you get your style? Your mom or your daddy? From my mom. Really? Yes. What's her name? B Barnett. <laughs> B Barnett? All yes. right, shout out to B Barnett. We're gonna have you walk the runway, okay? okay. All right, you go back there. All right. And when the music starts, you walk it, okay? You ready? Come on, mama. Let's start the music. Come on now. Before we get started, we got a little makeover shemergency. Now, I got this email from Star, who lives right up the street. She writes, Dear RuPaul, I'm 63 years old with a 16-year-old daughter. My entire wardrobe consists of graphic T-shirts and sweatpants. I need help from head to toe. Thank you, Ru. All right, come on out here, Star. A little bit of love. Now, let's take a look at some photos you sent in, Star, okay? Okay. Okay, here's mom in a graphic, oh, there's another graphic tee. And, oh, what do you know, there's a graphic tee. Oh, my goodness, Star, you're wearing a graphic tee. Oh, and another graphic tee. Okay, um, okay, we get the picture here. Uh, it's a graphic tee storyline. Correct. Yes, what is that about? When did you start wearing these T-shirts? Well, when I started looking for pictures, I realized like over seven years. Seven years. I've been doing this. Why? Because to me it says, um, y'all, I am closed down for business, so don't even look at me. Uh, that might be part of the story. Maybe not. I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. really? Well, it's really about comedy. It was about not having to worry about whether I lost 10 pounds or gained 20 pounds. Yes. It's also, if I go into the men's section t-shirts, they're usually funnier. Yeah. And I also like, if I spill on myself, you don't really notice yeah, it. Yeah, no, I think I hear what you're saying, Star, <laughs> but it feels like, I know, it feels like A, a cry for help, and B, that you, are, you don't want any attention that is anything other than uh, he, he, ha, 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 ha. He, 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 ha, ha, ha. Because the other attention you might get is a little too much for you to take. Am I right? Yes, I think so. Yeah. So, but you know, I you know yeah. I travel around the United States. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I travel around the United States, and usually this is ha this happens to all women around the United States. At one point, they got the man, they got the husband, they got the kids, they got all of this, and they want to shut down 
any other attention. And the biggest one, and people aren't ready for this one, the biggest one is they don't want to be judged by other women. They don't want other women to feel uh, threatened by them. So they take all sexuality out, all cuteness out, all of that, because graphic tea ain't cute, Miss Sister Girl. <laughs> It's just not. I mean, you could sleep in one, but do, don't yes, leave the house yes, in one. Yes, it's true. You know, so what do you want to change? Um, I kind of wanted to, I figured like before I got any older, I should try to get a little zippier, a little more pizzazz. Because 63 is not old. I mean, thanks to all the strides <laughs> and mir medical miracles that uh, brought to us by Cher and Goldie Hawn and, uh, you know. <laughs> Bette Midler. Yeah, Bette Midler. You know, it's, it's not old anymore. You're a child of 63. I know. I know. That's why I wanted to do this, too, to make myself rethink where I've put myself. Yeah, now your daughter Lizzie is here. Lizzie, what do you think of all this? She, you got a dress on, you got some heels yeah. on, you are cute, you come to see Miss Paul. I really think my mom deserves this because she's just worked so hard her entire life. And Doing what, what does she do? So I ride horses and my barn was going to be shut down and turned into condos and she helped stop the rezoning and she kept it a barn and she saved so many people, saved their horses, everything. Yeah. Have you ever dressed the way Lizzie is? Look how Lizzie's dressed, all cute and everything, like a young woman. Have you ever dressed like that? No, I'll no, answer for you. Not too much. Um, so, now, Star, our style team is waiting backstage for you. Are you ready? to enter into an unknown territory of your life. Are you ready to become a woman? Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. Now, we're gonna judge up all the outside, but it's up to you to do the work on the inside. And you have to ask yourself the serious questions of why am I letting, and I'm gonna say it, why did I let myself go? You're lovely. And there's nothing wrong with all of this, it's just, you deserve more, you're beautiful. 63 is not old anymore. Because, okay. yeah, it's true, it's true. So, head on back there and we cannot wait to see what you look like. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, fair faucet, come on, come on girl. <laughs> oh, she's gonna look good. <laughs> All right, Michelle, come on up here. Come on to up here. To become a woman. Yes. Now, uh, now we, we talked about this a lot. When you were uh, living down in Florida, you dressed a certain way, uh, like uh, a provocative way, and the other mothers were intimidated by you. Yes. Yeah, that's an ongoing theme with women. I think that's why a lot of people dress down. I agree, and for me, I, I didn't care whereas most mothers would dress down because they don't want to call too much attention to them yeah. on the car line. I wore six, maybe seven inch heels. Okay. I wore a little cut off pants so you could see my tattoos. Uh -huh. Eyeliner out to here, nose ring and nails. What? <laughs> what mothers? And what? What? Yes, yeah. A lot of people don't want to welcome any type of sexuality, which leads us into our First couple of guests. Now, uh, we're about to meet a well-known couple who is very open with their struggles with infidelity. Eek. Now, you've been married for 300 years? Yeah, just about, just, yeah. just shy of, yes. And you know, is cheating a deal breaker in your marriage? To be completely honest, I think for everybody, it's a case by case basis. I think most women are quick to say, oh no, he cheats, he is out the right, door. Right. But sometimes there are reasons for it. Like, um, I'm not defending it, because you know I don't condone it. I wouldn't be very happy about it if my husband cheated. Um, but sometimes maybe I'm not doing something and I'm not providing what I should be providing. A lot of times I am the one to shut stuff down. So I wouldn't be surprised in certain situations. Right. So right. I think it's a case by case, but for the most part, I'm not a fan of infidelity, then why get married? Well, listen, I'll tell you why. Because, you know, I, George and I have been together for many, many years. We're married. We're married mainly because we want to protect our assets. If you want to get real, right. we right. want to, because we don't have to be married. But um, I love him so much, and he is my best, best, most important person in my life. I wouldn't want to keep him from doing something that an opportunity. I would not want to keep him from a good. They, uh, what kind of opportunity? Well, listen. Gore Vidal said, never pass up an opportunity to have sex or be on television. <laughs> so if he wants to be on TV, so to speak, uh, 
I don't want to stop him. And I know we, we know we're joking about it, but I really, I really do feel. Now, I don't want to know about it. I don't want him to rub it in my face. I don't want any of that. And he feels the same way for me. He wants me to be the most, and I wouldn't do that to my best friend. I wouldn't say, uh, you can live your life, but all of this other stuff is off limits. It's so different in a same-sex marriage versus a hetero marriage. I'm not kidding. Hetero marriages are very much about control, so, you know, and almost the jealousy thing plays a lot sure. more into it. Not that it doesn't exist in same sex, but I think that there's a there's a different approach to it in heteronormative well, marriages. Well, I think there's a more evolved approach to it because it, it really, the, uh, the, the same sex deals with what men are like in real life. Yeah. The other way, you are fooling yourself, trying to think that somebody's not going to be tempted or not going to uh, want to pass up an opportunity. Oh, baby, temptation been around since Adam and Eve, honey. So yes. it's always going to be around. It's for us to be strong enough to say, no, I've already had that chocolate cake. I'm going to go back home to my cheesecake. Well, we're going to talk about this in depth. Let's meet our first guest. Actress and country singer Jana Kramer has been married to former NFL star Mike Cosin for four years. Mike admits he's cheated multiple times and they've talked openly about trying to survive the infidelity. Jana and Mike are here. Welcome them. I know. I'm ready. <laughs> to we jump. have issues, apparently. Well, <laughs> no, it's it's something everybody needs to talk about, and we're yeah. going to talk about it when we come back. <laughs> Are you a sex addict? Yes. Tell us about the first time you strayed. Was there any voice in your head that said, I shouldn't do this? I told myself, just put the phone down, like, you don't want this. That was true powerlessness. I yeah. couldn't not just say no. Actress and country singer Jana Kramer and NFL star Mike Cosson are talking about trying to survive infidelity. Now, this is a conversation everybody needs to have, and all roads lead to this, because it's, it's not just about the infidelity. It's about how we feel about ourselves. Now, you have a podcast we that talks about this. We actually do a podcast together, yeah, called, What's it Wind, called? Wind Down. Yeah. And it, it actually started with just uh, me doing it with a co-host, and... It was funny, you know, my husband was always, you know, he didn't want to talk about the affairs, and I, under I understood that, but at the same time for me, like, I needed an outlet to be able to talk to other women or other, you know, spouses to be like, hey, this is what I went through, and I just, selfishly, like, I needed that connection too, yeah. so I didn't feel alone. So he kind of started to see the effect of it helping people, so he was brave enough to come on the podcast and start talking about it, and then our numbers skyrocketed because yeah. I guess women actually do want to hear what men think yeah and so then he became an official co-host so That's we're working great. together now and Mike are you a sex addict yes and how how what determines the title sex addict or are you just an everyday man <laughs> right you know? right um that was uh when when I got discovered Jana didn't even know none of us knew what really sex addiction was but all she knew was like you need to figure out whatever this is because that's not normal behavior and so when I saw inpatient treatment, um, then I learned more about the addictive mindset, the addictive process, and how it relates, whether it's alcohol or drugs or sex, it's all the same thing. It's all the same characteristics and, and 12 steps. And yeah. I realized that my habits were addictive. Yeah. And, and it was all, it was all based from emotion for me. It's not physical things where I see somebody, it's all emotional for me. Right, because addiction is a symptom of a much deeper problem. Right. And what, what is that much deeper problem? Do you, do you know? Do you... For me, a lot of it comes from never feeling like I was good enough. And never feeling like whatever I achieved in my life, whether a relationship, whether my professional career, did I really earn this? Am I doing everything that I can? Why do I have such a beautiful wife? Why do I have this family? Like, I don't deserve this. I'm not good enough to have this. Mm, mm. And, and it's one of those things where trying to convince yourself that you are, yeah. I was never really able to. Yeah. And I think, too, with him, like, it was hard for him to connect intimacy with sex because a lot of people just think, like, I'm like, well, why can't you be intimate with me? Like, I'm your wife. And for him, like, that wasn't, that wasn't showing love. And yeah. sex and intimacy just never connected. So I think yeah. being able to work on that and trying to understand where that deep-rooted came from. And with addiction, too, everyone is so frustrating because everyone says it's just an excuse. But it's like, 
if, if that was his fix, just like you, someone needs their coffee or their cigarette, and that becomes an, an act of addiction. So yeah, me at Neiman Marcus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so t take us back to the moment you found out. Oh, it was so hard. I was actually about to play a show um, in Orlando, and my girlfriend um, Sarah, she actually, she was the one that came to me and said your husband's cheating on you, and I was just like, there's no way. Like there's. It, that'd be impossible. I don't, I'm with him a lot. Like how? How? I, and there, I just was like, no. I shut it down. And she was just like, you need to do some research. And I was like, I don't even know where to start. Like, how do I go about it? And she said, the phone bills. So when I was in Orlando about to play a show, I started looking through phone bills, and I just saw a lot of numbers that just did not add up. Started researching, and was just, I mean, my jaw just dropped to the floor. And I FaceTimed him and said, you know, you have about five minutes to get your story straight. And then, you know, he unloaded. More than you even knew. M more than I even like knew, but then also, um, you know, once he went to treatment, more came up and we discovered more. But it was, and then I went and played a show, so that was a tough show to play. Wow. Yeah. That's that's a lot. You know, in hindsight, when you look back, were there lots of clues? Oh, looking back now, 100%. Yeah. Oh, I mean, just yes. Now I wouldn't know 100% if he was again. Just the the defensiveness, just the, who he was as a person. He was just a shell of a person. Yeah. Have you changed your idea of what marriage is no. because of this? I don't want, I want just us. I don't want some, I, yes, I want him to be happy, but I want us to be able to work our relationship and to be the best we can together. And I know for me, I personally can't handle the feeling of not feeling good enough if he goes outside of the marriage. Mm -hmm. But here's an interesting tidbit when you were talking before we came out about deal breakers. And he told me that his marriage deal breaker is if I cheated on him. And I was like, that feels so one-sided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, it, and it truly made me really angry. So I was like, so you got to do all that. I but got then if, to. But then, yeah. well, you did. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, yeah. but I'm like, but then if I have that weak moment where I do, which I, heaven forbid I don't ever do that, but then you would leave me after all of that. I've right. stood by you, I've, you know. Wow. Explain yeah. that, Mike. Wow. Explain yourself. I would love to explain <laughs> myself. Explain that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, good job, honey. Explain yourself, darling. So, my thing is, because of all the work that we've done, because of all the therapy, because of all the late night discussions, crying and working this out, the fact that either of us would get to that point would be discouraging because our whole process of therapy and everything is, well, we need to be talking about the feelings that would lead us to that point. Yeah. So there should be a lot of conversations before we ever get there. And just like I tell her, I was like, nobody knows what they'll do until they're in that situation. Yeah. That's just off the top of my head. If I had to pick one thing, oh. that, that's, that's probably the one thing that I could consider leaving, but again, I don't know when I get there. Right. I don't know what the circumstances but were, I don't this, know. But you know, I mean, the that truth is, me. as human animals, as human animals, we do have desires, we have uh, temptations. Uh, whether we act on them or not, that's a whole different story, but the concept of monogamy is flawed. Mm -hmm. Do you feel me on that? Yeah, I, I, I trust me, I do get that. And we had spoken to, um, on our podcast, we talked to the sister wives. But again, the guy got to do all the fun. Yes. The girls didn't. So yes. again, that's, I'm like, that's where it seems so one-sided to me. Yeah. What's the name of the podcast again? Wind Down. Wind Down. Yeah. Why wind down? Well, because we have two kids, so the whole thing was like whining, and then also, we, I love wine. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, I just, I've always felt that in marriages, there should be a seven year recontract, a contract negotiation, mm -hmm. a renegotiation after seven years and say, hey, you still want to do this, you know, <laughs> because uh, a lifetime is a long time. It really right? is. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, now, when we come back, uh, Jana and Mike are going to talk more about this. So you guys stay right there. <laughs> back talking to Jana and Mike about their relationship and the concept of monogamy and infidelity and it's it's mixed up and everybody's talking about this mm -hmm. but tell me tell us about the first time you strayed was there any voice in your head that said uh, I shouldn't do this so that's interesting the, the first time I actually stepped out on our relationship was when we were dating it was only a few months into our relationship and I had just signed with a new a new team and I was staying in this hotel and there's somebody that I'd had a relationship with prior that lived nearby and I ended up having communication with her. And even when I had texted her and said to come over, I told myself, just put the phone down, like you don't want this. Mm -hmm. like, you don't want to do this. 
you just met Jana, she's amazing, like stop. I could not stop. Mm -hmm. And that was one of those moments where I looked back when I, when I got into the addictive progr addiction program of that was true powerlessness. I yeah. couldn't not just say no. But you could, like someone could sit here right. and be like, but you, but you could, but right. I can understand where that's the addiction, addiction right. piece. Right, for sure. So, yeah. I mean, it started early on when we were dating and then, you know, we went through a six month period where everything was good and we got married and, and got pregnant and everything. And then mm. things just started. The bachelor party. Bachelor party. Beforehand, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was a. But that, that you didn't. A, you didn't know the first thing. I didn't know. I didn't know that. I, I found that out after yeah. the fact. After the fact. Yeah. 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 Listen, I, I I understand addiction. I I, I you know, I understand addiction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, and but I know that the temptation to use, in your case, sex, has more to do with uh, not being able to process feelings, mm -hmm. you know, and not knowing what to do, and thinking that thing is going to repair you. Right. You know, are you also in a 12-step program? So I've done SLA, which is, because um, I, I, I truly do identify as like a love addict. Like I just love to love. And I've been in relationships too, where I've cheated in relationships, not on this marriage. I haven't stepped out of this marriage, but I've always like been onto the next thing. And that's mm -hmm. why this is the first time I've actually stayed in something and fought through it. And, you know, I, I go to the um, partners of yes. sex addicts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I mean, it's, it's it's hard, but at the same time, I love this man and I see the man he's becoming and what we're able to do for other people with our podcast and our tour that we've been going on. Like people, people want help. They want, they, they, they want to talk about it. They want to understand how did you trust again? Because if two people are actually really w willing to work on their marriage, it can work. Because marriage at the end of the day, no matter if there's infidelity or not, it's hard work. You have to work on it. Absolutely. It's like and two people have to work on it. They do. It's like looking into a mirror and you have yeah. to face yourself. Well, and that's the thing too. Like, and to, to, to your point, I'm not perfect. Do, through all of this, I've realized all the stuff that I have to work on yeah. too. Yeah. It's not just him, because in the beginning, trust me, I shamed him and was awful. Sure. But then I was like, let's look at myself now. What, what can I do better? How can I be a better person in this marriage? Right, because it's not an accident that you two are together and that there's right. something to be learned here. You know, I grew up in a house with all women, and I was in my 20s when I had to learn that there was a difference between love and sex. Because, you know, men think of sex as like exercise. I got a new ex workout partner. Right, right. <laughs> you know? And I was never, and it took me years to get that. Yeah. Do, are you able to separate the intimacy of your relationship from the sex he had outside the marriage? I mean, it's, it's really hard, but we've done a lot of work. And the, the best thing that a therapist told both of us is just, and me personally, is to stay present. Like, what, how is he today? What is, where are we right now in this moment? you know, how far have we come and like, what is he doing in this moment today to be a better person and, for, you know, me too. So I think, I, my mind still goes there and still travels, especially yeah. when there's triggers and oh, that's where, and then, so it's like those kind of moments right. still come up and it's hard. Like, I'm not gonna say it's all like rainbows and unicorns. Right, right. But I mean, I think we, and we've done things too, like he's really working, we saw like tantra therapists, so we, we're we working on the intimacy too. And it's hard for, for Jana, cause her mindset, she's very intimate. She, you know, again, she's, has love addict tendencies and loves Touch love. Touch is my like number one on my. Well, that's why you. Yeah. This was your less. This is my your, love language. Just you touch. Had, this was your cross to bear. I mean, yeah. you were attracted to him to get over this. We all have yeah. like yeah. A, a lesson to learn in this life, and this was this was yours. And you you know what was yours being with her? I guess it was. Mine was always. Uh, acts of service and words of affirmation. So physical touch is towards the bottom for me when it comes to love languages because intimacy and love and sex just never really, it was, it's uncomfortable for me. Yes. And I still have my struggle where even just her holding hands or looking into my eyes, I still might have a feeling of like, uh, what's right. going on here? You right. know, and, right. it's, and it's, it sucks. Honestly, it sucks. Like I hate being that way. And so I'm trying to take the action to do things different, to become comfortable with that because I want to give her what she wants and I want to be that way. I want to look at my wife and tell her I love her and, and her feel that from me and not feel uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever get tempted? To act out? To act out, yeah. No. It's, I've done enough work where I can stay ahead of things. I know what I need in my program. I know what the steps I need to take. I know the meetings I need to go to, the people I need to surround myself mm -hmm. with. And I'm able to actually rationalize myself from a sober mindset and say that's, 
that's not worth it. It's not what I want. Right. You 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 play it through. You right. see it through. It's that, that feeling after you do something, that feeling after you have a drink, that feeling you, after you step out of your relationship where you think you want it, and then afterwards it's this shame. Yeah. Nothing but shame. No one feels good afterwards. Now, I want to see and hear what this audience has to say oh, about gentle. all of this. So <laughs> when we come back, we're going to talk to the audience. back. Now, Michelle's in the audience to hear what the audience has to say about all of this. Who do you have up there, Michelle? Hey, what's your name? Nancy. Nancy, what do you think about all this? Well, see, I also felt... Stand up, Nancy. She looks beautiful. Yes, she does. Yeah. She beautiful. I also had thought it was a deal breaker if my husband cheated on me, and but I forgave him, and he did it a few times, but I, I just had the feeling that he had issues, and so I'm with you on that. Nancy, where did you hide the body? <laughs> <laughs> I've always thought that everybody needs a starter marriage at 21, and then move on to the next marriage, the keeper. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Who else Another you got, one. Michelle? What's your name? Candace. Hey, Candace, what are your thoughts? I hear a lot of men say, oh, I'm not emotionally whatever. Mm -hmm. And then so they go out, they step on their relationship. So as a man now, how are you dealing with your emotions? How are you able to say, hey, I don't like this, so can you fix this? Instead of saying, I don't like this, let me go have sex with somebody else. How do men deal with their emotions, please? Like, oh my <laughs> God, like, deal with yeah. your emotions, please. <laughs> Great question, Candace. Um, I mean, exactly to what you're saying. It's, uh, it's now I'm doing things where I'm coming to Jana and I'm saying, hey, this is how I'm feeling. This is maybe something that you're doing that's, that's making me feel a certain way or that someone else is doing. And, and just my experience is I'm, I'm willing to be more open and talk about what it is I'm feeling instead of doing exactly what you're talking about, where before I would feel something and be like, I don't know how to talk about it. I'd never learned that. Uh, I'm out, gone, and I go sleep with somebody else. But also in it. every marriage, it gets kind of rote and it gets kind of routine. And it's hard to tell the mother of your children uh, after many years that you want to get freaky because you kind of feel embarrassed, right. you know, unless she, you know, puts on a costume or some wigs or incorporates some latex and leather or whatever. I'm looking at you like uh, <laughs> But you know what I mean? It, after several years, it gets a little routine. Have, Jenna, have you thought about um, I mean, becoming- I'll get freaky. You get freaky? I'll get freaky. Okay. <laughs> to save the marriage. Yeah. How, Mike, is that okay with you? Would you, st would you be able to let her see that other side of you? Has she ever seen the sort of monster that lives inside of you? It, it's tough. I think we're still working on growing our intimacy because for her, she doesn't want, I don't want her that to trigger her. I don't want it to feel like, okay, that's the person that you stacked oh, out. Yeah. Like, who, who, who are you? Who is this in front of me? Yeah. Let's connect. Let's be together. And we still have our fun, you yeah. know, and, and, but it's, I think that's a, that's a, a, a sensitive area that we have to really work through on a gradual pace. What if she showed you her monster? Come on, come on. <laughs> Who do you have, Michelle? I highly recommend the monster. Okay. <laughs> What's your name, sweetie? Tammy. Hi, Tammy, what do you think? I think um, he said he wouldn't be okay with her cheating, but would you be open to a threesome? Oh, is is wow. that an invitation, Tammy? <laughs> Well, you said you'd be freaky, so. <laughs> I think for us, that's just not an option. Yeah. You know? Y'all barking up the wrong tree. That's yeah. Not I just, right. You're really just <laughs> But, Jana, you hear yourself, because you, you are, you, you have an idea of what marriage is, and it's unbreakable, that, because it, the universe, your story here may be, I have to change what my idea of marriage is. No, because I truly do believe in a marriage being with just one other person mm -hmm. in my core. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I will say, just from my perspective, I completely support Gina in that because regardless of my past actions and, and being in active addiction, I have the same beliefs as her. Because I know if I, did, if I had anything else with someone on the side or worked something out, I wouldn't be able to give all of myself to anybody. And I wouldn't be a great partner. I'll be terrible. I wouldn't be intimate. I wouldn't be present. I wouldn't be... I'll just be focused on everything else other than mm -hmm. whoever that core, you know, woman was. I just wouldn't be able to do it. Wow. Well, thank you, Jen and Mike, oh, for being you. so you, open. We'll be right back after this. 
lot's happened to you in a short amount of time. Has your lifestyle changed at all, how you see yourself? You know, when you're, when you're facing death, like, it makes you question why you're here. And it did change me as a person, but what really, really changed me was my divorce. Welcome back. My next guest is the star of HGTV's wildly popular series, Flip or Flop. Welcome, Tarek El Moussa. giving hugs today. I am giving, and you too, good for you. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and you, this is something you know about. You, uh, you, we know you as a married person. You're no longer married. I am no longer married. Is that a good thing? Um, well, it depends on how you look at it. Yeah. You how, know, I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. It was kind of uh, not something I anticipated in my life, but you know, I learned a lot from it. I, I can say I'm a much better person from going through what I went through. Yeah. So yeah, I wouldn't change anything. I think everybody knows that y you were on the show Flip or Flop. Still are actually. You season, still? Season eight premieres in August. In August. And is it with your ex-wife? Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Because you guys were together for how long? It was over 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Is your first, was that your first marriage? It was my first marriage. So we met, we met when we were young. I was 24, she was 22. And then the day we met, we pretty much connected right away. Yeah. And you know, we built a life together. And, and will you marry again? You know, if someone asked me that question a few months ago, I would have said no. Uh huh. But I have hope. I do have hope. You know. Yeah. As more time goes on, like the more my eyes are opening to what's out there, and, and I and I do believe there's more for me out there, and, and I do believe in love. Like I really believe in love, so I am hopeful. Well, the, you know, people. Everyone says they believe in love, but everyone has this sort of romantic idea. We were talking with Jana about this, about the whole idea of romantic love being like the fairy tale. Is it, has your idea of love changed since your marriage? No, to be honest with you. Like for me, when I, when I think or talk about love, I think about being willing to do something to make the other person happy. So like for me, love is putting the other person above my needs and wants. And at the same time, if they love me back, they'll do the same for me. So you're really just loving the heck out of each other. Yeah, but Tariq, but, you know, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? Oh, uh, this is true. This is true. Right. Well, I guess you're right on that, but maybe that's well, why I'm divorced. I don't know. Well, <laughs> you know, so, and she's gone on to remarry. She's got a baby with someone else. That was fast. I mean, oh, that's wow. a little questionable. Don't you think, I mean, between us? Um, well, I've been single for three years as of a few days ago, and she's married and pregnant. So, um, you know, we all live our own lives, and she made the decisions she made. And, you know, I, 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 I obviously, for my kids, I hope it works out forever. And I hope that my kids have a stable household. I hope he's an amazing stepdad. So far, he's been doing a great job, and I'm excited that they're having a kid. Like, it's all good. You, how many kids do you have with I have, her? I have two with her. I have an uh, eight-year-old daughter, Taylor, and a three-year-old son, Brayden. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's, talk about, talk about life-changing events. And then on top of that, a few years ago, you were diagnosed with cancer. Yeah, what yeah. What kind was, of cancer? So 2013, I found out I had thyroid cancer. We did further testing because my doctor had missed it and found out I also had testicular cancer. So that, you know, I'm like in my early 30s, and I thought I was going to die, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. So in hindsight, when you look back at that time, because a lot's happened to you in a short amount of time, what do you think all of that meant? You know, it's like I look at my life now, I feel like looking back, that wasn't me. That was a completely different person. Mm. Have, has your lifestyle changed at all, how you see yourself? You know, when, you, when you're facing death, like, it makes you question who you are, what you are, why you're here. And it did change me as a person, but what really, really changed me was my divorce. And after all the sicknesses and then the divorce, it completely broke me. Mm -hmm. And it was the most miserable experience of my life. But it gave me an opportunity to reevaluate like who I am and who I want to be. 
and it just really made me a better person. Yeah, it's like uh, the phoenix rising from the ashes. Are you stronger now? Are you healthy now? It's, it's so funny. Years ago, I would hear people hitting rock bottom and breaking and you know coming back, and I'm like, these people are crazy. I'm like, no, it is real. I am the strongest version of myself I've ever been. Thank you. Thank you. And, and the, the one thing that makes all of it worth it was the lesson that I learned of being the absolute best dad possible. Right on. I would give everything away. Like, I would give away everything, live in a box, to have my kids. That is like, beautiful. No problem. I love it. We have more Tark when we come back. We'll be right back. <laughs> Tark El Musa is here from Flip or Flop. Uh, you got an amazing story. You, would be, you, uh, you were saying that when you guys split up, the next day you had to be on camera. With what was that like? One, it was probably the worst day of my life that first day, to be honest with you. You know, it was it was really really difficult. I looking back, I mean, I slept two hours a night. I was sick. I lost like thirty pounds because I wasn't eating. The divorce like really really broke me, but. I had to keep showing up because I fought so hard to get to this point where I'm at in life that to throw it all away because my emotions are in the way wasn't worth it. And I knew I had to continue doing what I was doing if I wanted to reach goals and most importantly, take care of my kids, yeah. my career. Yeah. So I sucked it up. Did you see a therapist? Yeah, like 900 of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, you have this, do you have a therapist now? Uh, yeah, I do. How did you find, how long have you been with this one? Uh, recent, I think a few months. Really? How does, how does one go about finding a therapist? If someone's going through some stuff, how do you find a therapist? You know, I'm Mr. Know-it-all, so I'm smarter than everybody and I didn't need a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> so, I find for me that venting, just talking, expressing yourself, communicating, it's, it's, it's like actual, it's called therapy for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I reached out to my doctor, to friends, and I've gone through a couple different therapists and I like to get new ideas and new insights, so I'll change every now and then. But I think it's really important just to be open and expressive and just tell the truth. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So Tarek, what's next for you? What's coming up next? Well, Are you dating? Yeah, I'm dating actually. So yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, been, I've been dating for a few years now, just no luck yet. Um, well, what's, I mean, no, it's, no, it's just for it's the experience, yeah. You, you know, for right now, I'm like in the best place I've ever been in my life. I have never been in such a good place, mentally, financially, spiritually, like everything is perfect. So I am walking on eggshells when it comes to relationships right now because everything is going so great. And yeah. my biggest fear in life is that feeling of loss and I'm still scared to fall in love again because I don't ever want to face that feeling. But you've been it's through the worst out. of it. it. How could it ever be worse than what you've already I been through? I know, exactly, you know? exactly. That's why as time goes on, I'm getting better and better and better. But you know, season eight, Flip or Flop, we're still shooting, it airs uh, August. So very exciting. It is gonna be one of the absolute best seasons ever. There are amazing transformations. There's a different dynamic on the show, clearly, with her being remarried and pregnant. Um, it's so like I, the Sonny and Cher show, when they came back together, <laughs> Cher was pregnant with another man's baby. Did you know that? Oh my gosh, I did not know that. Yeah, so you're the, the, you're the 21st century Sonny and Cher. Oh great, nice, thanks. Yeah. Thank you everyone, we'll be right back after this. Has a picture of Star before. Let's see Star now. Come on out here, Star. <laughs> now, earlier in the show, we met Star, who wanted a new look. She's 63 and only wears graphic tees and shops at men's stores. This is her daughter, Lizzie. You ready, Lizzie? Yes. Okay. I <laughs> now I'm going to show you guys a picture of Star before. Oh, okay. 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 Now let's see Star now. Come on out here, Star. A little bit of love Look at you. 
Here, come on, let's sit down. Here, sit down here, uh, star. Come on, you are the star. You're gonna sit right there. Oh my goodness, you look gorgeous. Thank you very much. How do you feel? I feel fabulous. Yeah? I feel great. You look like a movie star. I feel like a movie star. Yeah. I do. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, what's, how, what's the biggest difference in the way you feel now and the way you feel when you're wearing a graphic t-shirt? I just feel more confident. Uh, I feel strong. I feel very strong. Yeah. Because you know what? I know. There's, you know, honestly, when you look like this, there is a consciousness that's there because the person is present. They're uh, aware of what they look like. How does it feel to have everyone looking at you? It's interesting. I like it. It's, um, it makes me feel a lot more youthful. Yeah. <laughs> really? So, Lizzie, Lizzie, what, uh, what are you thinking? It's like something out of a movie. Uh -huh. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Is it a horror movie or a... <laughs> no, it's like a, a movie with the, the badass okay. of the group. All right, all right. So I think Star, there's no, all roads lead to one place, that runway oh. over there. Yes, let me take you over. Are you, are you ready for the runway? <laughs> okay, watch your step here. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna put you right there. All right, everybody. Are you ready? Hit it, Star. Thanks to all my guests today. See you next time. Bye.